Welcome to another video. We are in lesson two of our series entitled SHTF 201. I trust that you've worked your way through lesson one and it's probably going to take quite some time to absorb all of that information and the theology of what is discussed in that message. And I want to dovetail back into that topic for just a minute. I won't spend a lot of time with Lesson 1, but sort of a recap as I have been um, evaluating what I've said and what I've written. And I just want to be clear that um, I don't want to make it a point of contention or to create a stumbling block with those of you believers that do not hold a mid-trib rapture position. I've never allowed that in my walk as a Christian or theologian. I have friends that believe in a pre-trib rapture. I have friends that believe in a post-trib rapture. I don't think that it is a um, foundational principle that alienates us from the fellowship of Christ. So don't allow this issue to become divisive in your walk. Um, it's just not worth it. The thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, we, we don't know the hour, we don't know the day. We, we know he's coming. Um, so I just want to set that perfectly clear for you. So, as you are studying your Bible, and as you are processing this very intensive series, as we get ready to talk about Lesson 2, The Four Goals of Survival, I want to bring to your attention a Bible that I recently picked up. It's called the Founder's Bible, and it is produced by the Founder's Bible, um, Shiloh Rhodes Publishers, and a man who I have had the privilege of listening to, he, um, he spoke in my church many years ago, Mr. David Barton. He's produced a fascinating Bible full of historical documents on the Founding Fathers. Just an absolute, absolute gem of a resource material. It has the Declaration of Independence the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution in it. And this is a book that I think that every prepper and Christian should have in their resource library. So pick this up. I will put a link in the description. I am not being endorsed by David Barton to shill this to you. I'm just simply making a recommendation right now that I'm very, very excited to have this in my library. So if it helps you, great. So I know what you are thinking right now. If all of this is true, and uh, we need to be able to weather the storm for three and a half years, then perhaps the, the best approach right now would be to uh, empty your checking account and head to Sportsman's Warehouse and then make a mad dash over to Costco and, and bulk up on rations and supplies. And, of course, afterwards, uh, grab the wife and kids and head down to the RV dealership and purchase the, the latest Mercedes-Benz uh, Unimog and then start driving to Utah, right? And once you get to the most remote place in, in Utah or maybe Idaho... Uh, you're going to throw that camo net over that big rig. You're going to outfit the entire family in multi-cam camo and slap on a pair of Gen 4 night vision goggles on the family pet. Right? <laughs> That's what you need to do. All right. Time out. Pump the brakes. Slow down. Remember, we are not building a doomsday bunker. With everything in the Christian walk, it all begins and ends with faith and balance. 
And that's the driving point of this lesson today. So you'll find throughout this series that I'm going to bring you to one point and another point, and that I am always going to try to find center with the information that I'm providing you so that you can assess this not only from an intelligence standpoint, but my primary focus and motivation for delivering this information to you in this very um, intensive uh, lecture is that uh, you operate within the confines of your safe place. Okay, I want to keep you safe. Um, I, I don't think it's time to run out and uh, charge up the card, the charge cards, to max out the, the credit cards and cash out your 401k. Uh, no man knows the hour, and it's presumptuous to assume that if you're... Um, you know, if you create a financial hardship by moving into a psychosis or some phobia-based model that we have only days, weeks, or months before the Great Fall, then we might be in for a surprise. The art of prepping is not a cultic practice, but a dependency on God's promise. We have been commissioned to share His love, and to live by faith, but nowhere in Scripture does it articulate that we should um, quit our jobs and all move into a yurt. I know uh, you're probably um, seeing yourself right now in the mirror as this guy right here, But the reality is, is that your wife probably views you more of along the lines of this dude. So let's, uh, let's not lose focus on the fact that uh, we soon will be separated from electricity and the grocery stores. And this is the key point that I want to make in, in this lesson today is um, as soon as we separate ourselves from electricity and the grocery stores, there's a strong probability. Now, I don't, I don't want to um, double talk here. I don't want to negate what I'm telling you. This is not a contradiction. This is, um, this is an antinomy. And you need to look that word up. An antinomy is two apparent opposing points that seemingly contradict one another, but in balance, they make up two sides of the same coin. That's an antinomy. So I'm going to say that as soon as we separate ourselves from electricity and grocery store, there's a strong probability that um, uh, <laughs> within 60 days, the vast majority of preppers and survivalists will probably die. And uh, from the simple fact that you can't feed your family. And, and that needs to really resonate with your pumping the brakes and your whoa Nelly and you trying to run out there and amass all this equipment and gear thinking that you've got this. Okay? So... Slow down, put the charge card back in your wallet, and please step away from gunbrokers.com. Um, in subsequent videos, uh, I am going to, within this series, discuss the steps for building the perfect survival systems, which will include the tools and the resources for uh, both a stay put as well as a bug out strategy. But I assure you, if uh, you go to the bank tomorrow and empty out your savings account, there, there's a good chance your, your wife's probably going to leave you. So I don't want that. So let's talk about the four goals to survival. In this video that I'm sharing with you right now, this, this lesson, is going to require some homework on your part. There's a lot of information that you're going to have to uh, review, and I want you to process this in your own time frame. 
There's no hurry to get to lesson three. I'm not going anywhere and neither should you. So please stay, stay near your computer, uh, whether you're watching it on a tablet, a cell phone, or you have a laptop or PC and an internet connection, you're warm and dry and you're safe right now. So it's all good. Okay. But I want to talk about the four goals to survival, and then I will annotate and redirect you back to some playlists within this website for you to go and review and watch in addition to the key points that I'm making right now. Okay? So, goal number one in survival is very, very simple. And you might want to write this down. The very first goal in survival is to stay undetected. Whether you're staying put or whether you're bugging out. And all of this information that I'm giving you relates to both facets, as my phone rings, both facets of your proximity, whether you're in your home or whether you've bugged out into some remote wilderness jungle. The key thing for you to recognize in this survival strategy is that you have to stay undetected. And this is, to me, the best method for self-defense. I've already covered this subject in my playlist, How to Survive Six Keys, so I will direct you to a video that I entitled How to Survive SHTF Episode 1, Self-Defense. And that message there, it's just a really simple three or four minute, maybe five minute um, presentation that it's not dealing with uh, weapons of war. It's dealing with the art of concealment. And self-defense is to stay undetected. That's your best method. Okay, so don't, don't, don't try to be uh, Rambo and there's no reason to run around acting all Mr. Bravado uh, when this tribulation starts. You need to hunker down and keep your head down. Okay, key number two or the goal in survival as we talk about these four aspects I want to I want to bring up this point right here because it's very simple. I mean this stuff is so simple it's profound. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stay undetected. The second thing that we're going to do in survival, <laughs> are you ready? Uh, you're going to try to stay warm and dry. How'd you like that one? Warm and dry, right? I mean, that's it. That That's really that simple, that forthright. There's no reason to overthink survival. Warm and dry. And I discussed this in the same playlist in the Six Keys to Survival in, I believe it's uh, episode three. And you'll go and study that and talk about and learn about survival clothing. Staying warm and dry to me is the second most important requirement for uh, making it all the way through this period. Okay? So just create your little outline right now, and we're going to begin to put meat on the bones. But it's very overwhelming to think that you're going to go out here and jump into a strategy and try to put together some sort of program um, and process and fill up your garage with a bunch of stuff if, if you just start running around chasing your tail and watching videos and reading books. And you're, you're going to be completely overwhelmed. So this is the reason why I'm bringing this up in lesson two, because I am going to try to direct you and to channel your focus and to drive you specifically. All right. We're, we're not going to take a shotgun approach to survival. We're, we're going to run a laser beam. I am going to drill down and help you understand that if you create this outline, you're going to be amazed. You're going to be amazed at how easy survival is. So staying warm and dry. Number three, and we're going to move through these pretty quickly. 
Number three, stay hydrated and fed. Right? So your habitat, whether it's near your home or whether it's out there in uh, the back 40 somewhere, your habitat needs to have these two renewable resources at your disposal. Hydrated and fed. So as you're writing your outline and as you're put to, putting together your strategy right now and you're thinking about staying hydrated and, and keeping your family fed, if those two renewable resources are not where you are right now, then you need to make a change right now. For those of you that are living in your cities who are dependent upon a city water system or a grocery store, this ought to be a red flag for you. So while I'm encouraging you not to run out and to, to, to buy that Mercedes uh, Unimod, I am telling you right now that you, you might want to think about getting out of your city. Y you might. Um, I've been researching areas throughout the country and not in preparation for any video or message that I want to do on this website, but for our own personal analysis and Mountain Dew and I have been thinking about starting a business up and we're very uh, inclined right now to open up a restaurant. So I've been analyzing and targeting some areas throughout the country and I've had this strong desire to go back to the West and I've been looking in Wyoming, Montana, Utah, and Idaho and I am going to just tell you something right now. While everyone is touting that this is the best place in the country to, to, to be a prepper or a survivalist, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, it's too late to go there. It's too late. Maybe three years ago. But right now, you're, you're not going to be able to afford to live there. It's absolutely amazing how much property values have increased in that part of the country. I mean, I remember back in the day when Aspen, when I lived in Aspen, Colorado, how ridiculously expensive it was. And, and I was looking at just 1,500 square foot homes in Bozeman, Montana, and I'm freaking out. I mean, I'm going in there showing this to Mountain Dew, and we're looking at it. I mean, we're in the business. She's in that industry as well as I am. And we know property values. And I'm telling you right now, if you're paying a half a million dollars for a house in Bozeman, Montana, you're not getting the same size house that I'm getting in um, South Carolina. You're not. Two to one. It's absolutely ridiculously overpriced. So I am not going to recommend that you start analyzing the most strategic places to relocate your family because I'm just going to say this right now, point blank. It's too late. It's too late to go there. Um, you need to look at other places. And I would say right now, just categorically, if you're already east of the Mississippi, you might want to consider hanging out in um, the Smoky Mountains. Western North Carolina, Tennessee, or South Carolina. Those would be my primary picks, and I wouldn't even say Texas. I, I don't believe Texas. Okay, so if you're looking for renewable resources right now that's going to allow you to stay hydrated and fed, this is what you need to be thinking about. All right? Number four, and this is the the uh, focus of this lesson today. Number four, stay positive. In any survival situation, the delta has always been the difference between the physical and the mental. In lesson one, we conquered the spiritual. In lesson two, we're going to challenge ourselves with conquering the mental. If you notice in this series right now, we haven't even begun to talk about the physical. 
And, and you would think that would be the very first thing that we would be chomping on right now is amassing all this kit and equipment because the physical, the physical, the physical is what's important, isn't it? No, it's not. And I'm going to prove to you and illustrate to you in this presentation today that the physical is not necessary. It's really not. Unless you have the mental conquered, the physical is going to do you no good. I have a video on the same playlist, the Six Keys to Survival, entitled um, The Psychology of Survival. It's about a 45-minute video. But if you really want to learn how to win the mind game in a survival or an SHF, SHTF situation, then you need to go watch that video. I told you there was going to be homework. You need to go watch The Psychology of Survival in that playlist. Okay? Now, there is a movie that I highly recommend watching that will inspire you and encourage you to understand that survival is not about having the best kit and equipment, but moreover having the will and determination to stay alive. There's a movie entitled The Way Back, starring uh, Colin Farrell and Ed Harris. This movie is based upon uh, a true story that every person taking a humanities class right now in college, I, I would make this movie um, a required watch or required view. When I was in college, we took a sociology class and <laughs> the professor required us to go watch The Gods Must Be Crazy. And... It was all right. I, it didn't overwhelm me. It didn't make an impact on me. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you really want to know the key to survival, um, you need to watch this movie. This movie nails it. So I, I want to play uh, a short trailer for you right now to whet your appetite. So watch this. Sign the confession. Yeah. <laughs> Kindness can kill you. If you are serious about making a run for it, I'm with you. Keep going, the snow is blinding us! Don't you see? This is perfect! They'll never find us like this! We're lost. Someone's been following us. No! She needs protection. We can barely feed ourselves. She comes with us. We will kill us all. We're already dying. Like chicken. Yeah, a big black poisonous chicken with no legs. My wife will never be able to forgive herself. I have to get back. Go over the Himalayas? How? We walk. Now, when you watch this movie, this is what I want you to do. So here's the third part of this assignment. I want you to take this outline that I'm giving you, the four goals of survival. Number one, staying undetected. Number two, staying warm and dry. Number three, staying fed and hydrated. And number four, staying positive. I want you to take that outline and those four goals 
and a pen with you, and while you're watching that movie, every single time that movie emphasizes, either positively or negatively, the struggle or the success of each one of those goals, I want you to put a check mark next to that specific goal. And when you're done watching this movie, I want you to go back and look at that outline. And I want you to see how prevalent this theme is in this movie. It's a reoccurring theme, guys. Over and over and over again, um, <laughs> this movie talks about the importance of staying undetected, staying warm and dry staying hydrated and fed, along with staying positive. This is what kept these men alive. So, in closing, I want to uh, add that over the years, I have amassed a large cache of survival gear and equipment. I mean, if I was to give you a tour of everything, it, it would probably overwhelm you. I, I literally have tens of thousands of dollars in perhaps enough cargo to, to fill up a U-Haul truck. And I'm not talking about the little one. I'm talking about the big one, the monster one, the one that's got grandma's attic. I could fill one of those trucks up with everything that I've got in survival preparation. I could. But I want you to understand something, that the basis of me collecting this kit and equipment was not to give me security. I have outfitted myself as a resource, as a commissary, as a library that I feel like because I am positioned in a place in this part of the country where I am going to be used in an instrumental way during this first part of the tribulation, if, if I make it, to be an encouragement and to be a lifeboat and to help rescue those who, who need support. So that's the reason why I have accumulated what I've accumulated. But I can tell you right now that once, um, uh, you know, once critical mass is reached and I move beyond that point of no return and, and you know, and we see the zombies coming into the neighborhood, I can tell you something right now. Between Mountain Dew and myself, uh, there's only two things I'm grabbing, apart from Mountain Dew. Uh, my bag, which is about 50 pounds worth of gear, and the cat. I'm taking my cat. She's cool. And if you met her, you'd take her too. Um, you can call her by name and she'll come. And she's quite the hunter. She can catch rabbits and squirrels and birds. This, this cat, can, she's like a panther. And I tease everybody about I've got a pet panther. I'm, I'm taking Bella with me. But uh, don't, don't be confused by what you might see in my gear review presentations or everything that I present on this website that uh, you got to have all this stuff. You don't. What do you need? You need to stay undetected. You need to stay warm and dry. You need to stay fed and hydrated. And lastly, you need to stay positive. Those are the four goals of survival. And after you watch this movie, The Way Back, you're going to recognize that I'm speaking the truth. So I want to thank you for watching this lesson. And until next time, be safe.